Nision. Oh, please be gone. No one will ever know how much I abuse you. I have borderline personality disorder. I don't know what it is. You have destroyed me! And the truth is not going to feel good. And you hate it. Bye. Uh oh. <laughs> The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines the phrase dumpster fire as noun, U.S. informal, an utterly calamitous or mismanaged situation or occurrence, colon, disaster. This phrase is a perfect term when looking at what becomes a public display in a once successful YouTuber, aka Onision's, life in 2011. But you see, for a dumpster fire to start, something must ignite it. And in this, that was the introduction of Canadian pop star Shiloh. Before meeting Onision, aka Greg Jackson, Shiloh had a promising career. A number of hits over the years, started in the business very young, um, double platinum, uh, great career, and then she met Onision. In one year, Onision will have robbed her of her success, positive public image, and much more. We will be looking at the events of their relationship. Onision's online presence wasn't anything too disastrous from the beginning. Sure, Onision was an insufferable prick during his military service. Sure, he was a horrible person to his first wife. But if that was all he did, he would not be as interesting to so many people on the internet today. This is a part two documenting all of Mr. Jackson's online presence, but each part can be viewed separately. In part one, we looked through his military career and his separation from his first wife. In it, I mostly focused on establishing traits Onision displayed way back then, before becoming infamous, that he has never grown out of. Those traits will also be displayed in this part, mainly the trait of him constantly needing to be in a relationship, and also a trait common amongst pretty much all lol cows the trait of oversharing intimate details to the public. Onision's early life was merely mundane details with a messy breakup and some strange behavior sprinkled in. And while interesting as part of something bigger, does not properly paint a picture of the infamy that follows this strange <laughs> man. You see, last time we left Greg, he had just announced separation from his first wife, Skye, while emotionally cheating on her with a 16-year-old, now 17-year-old, named Shiloh. I forgot to mention this in part one. Before going out to visit Shiloh in Pennsylvania, Greg had to legally check if he could do the naughty with her. Before he made his way there, um, he had explained to me that we could get in a lot of trouble. Uh, because Into a lot of trouble. trouble. Yeah, he explained to me we could get in a lot of trouble and that he had to check the state laws before he came. Because of your age. Because he knew we were going to sleep together. Disgusting. Greg spent no time after getting Shiloh in December of 2010 to up his whole life and move out to Toronto to ruin this young woman's life, I'll bet temporarily. According to Shiloh, after having to part ways in Pennsylvania due to the cops being called on him while he was staying in a hotel with Shiloh. When do you see him again? Um, so December 2011 is when we were in PA. He was with me in Toronto by January. And got an apartment. Sadly, despite being only 17, Craig started his abusive tactics to dig his claws into the Canadian and isolate her from her family as soon as he moved closer to her. While Greg was out living in Canada and courting the underage pop star, his ex-wife Skye had to deal with more of Onision's narc-induced rage. Having not yet finished licking the wounds that the public divorce left her, Skye had to endure the exposure of being an ex of Onision through the beginning of January 2011. You see, Onision decided to start his new year by bashing his ex-wife because on January 1st, he uploaded a video titled, She Betrayed Me. Hey guys, I'm making this video to document um, what I came home to today. Uh, Sky's sister called and she said that she wanted to pick up some of Sky's clothes with her, so I told him where the key was. In the video, Mr. Onion walks around a filthy house as he lists items he claimed that Sky and her sister, Alicia, had taken from his home. The ground. Um, that wasn't there when I left, so there's garbage everywhere. Um, and the TV stand is missing. That's Sky's, and that's totally cool that she took it. Um, problem is, is that they propped my TV up over here, got dirt all over my couch. He implied that Sky stole over $2,000 of his items when he was not there. In the video, he also says, Where'd it go? Why did you take my stuff? I don't get it. Because you never, I mean, like, if you asked me, if you literally just said, hey, Greg, I need this stuff or I want this stuff, it's fair. 
and lie some more about what was actually happening in the situation to his fan base. He then posted a second video the next day of his surveillance footage, trying to make his ex look like a mustache twirling cartoon villain. I was also told that Ned Anissa said she was nowhere near my house when my valuables were taken away from me without my permission. Problem is, as I watched my valuables being taken away from me without my permission on my security system. Here's a picture. Meanwhile, making himself look like a poor ooh sad boy who just wants to move on. Okay, so I have proof that I'm telling the truth. But the point is, is these accusations are very, very destructive. And I hope that you guys really think about what you're saying. And that you cease to continue to attack me. Because I really, really just wanted to be your friends. That's why I got a divorce. Because we had a wonderful friendship. In actuality, what happened was Onision told Skye where the keys were so she could go pick up her things, while Onision was finishing up his act of infidelity that he started at the end of 2010. In an act of trying to cover his own ass after his fans publicly harassed Skye to to his videos, Onision uploaded a video titled, Please Leave Skye Alone, as if he believed that would make up for the fact that he accused his ex of a crime. For everyone who's calling Skye a bunch of mean names, um harassing her, going to her channel, leaving angry comments, etc. Please stop. Please. Because I love Skye. I really do. And I hate seeing people say those horrible things about her, even though she took my stuff. Like, $3,000 of my stuff. Also, from every account of people who have visited him over the years, the, the messy state of the house, it's him. Onision leaves his house as a mess. The kitchen was always an absolute disaster from the videos that he would do with food. The videos Onision posted were eventually deleted, an action Onision will do quite often over the course of the next year due to his breakdowns over his inability to have healthy relationships with women. Onision left Sky alone for the rest of that month and posted a video January 31st titled, Would Onision Have a Three-Way? This style of video, one where Onision is talking about his preferences rather than doing sketches, is one he would continue as he progressed on YouTube over the years. He says in this video that he would not have a three-way, saying, no guys, I, Greg, or Anision, whatever you want to call me, will never ever have a threesome based on my current state of mind. That means if you offered me a threesome in any packaging, no matter how attractive it was, I would turn it down because I find that to be degrading. Degrading in the sense that whoever you're with, that relationship is no longer as strong as it once was because you just shared something that was supposed to be exclusive with someone else, that being your penis. This opinion would change drastically in his career, perhaps fueled by his increasing need for satisfaction. It is theorized Onision may have a sex addiction, a possible diagnosis that happened because of the events that happened in the year we're talking about. Onision and Shiloh at this time are dating privately, but by February, Greg introduced Shiloh to his Onision forums as a friend and made her a moderator. Shiloh had a lot of drama in her days as a mod, but those dramas are dwarfed by what happens during their relationship. And to be honest, what happened was she banned people she got jealous of. Of course, Onision makes it seem like Shiloh is a jealous, unreasonable person because of this. But behind the scenes, Greg is, well, a douchebag. He, he just sexualized everything. While dating Shiloh in secret, a man by the username Smells Your Butt begins appearing with Onision. Smells Your Butt, also known as Damon Elliott or Buck22, was Shiloh's friend and rumored to be her producer at the time. Little did people know, the videos with Damon were filmed in Canada, and Greg was living there with Shiloh at the time. They both continued to keep their relationship hidden, most likely due to both Shiloh's age, as well as to deter viewers from concluding Greg had been emotionally cheating on Skye. Another sign pointing to Onision and Shiloh both living together at this time was a video posted by Shiloh on February 2nd, where Shiloh mentions dyeing her hair. On the same day, Onision posted a video with dyed orange hair, and images of Shiloh and Greg together in the snow with red hair surfaced on the internet when they went public with their relationship. Greg and Shiloh finally went public with their relationship on April 12th, despite their relationship actually starting secretly the previous year. Onision introduced his fans to Shiloh in a video titled Onision's Girlfriend. There she is. Say hi. <laughs> Alright, so, so that's enough of her. Because Shiloh was successful in Canada, many Canadian fans recognized her from her music videos on the Canadian Disney Channel. Soon after this, Shiloh created two side channels on YouTube, first one being Dracula, which consisted of clips from Shiloh and Greg's life and random skits. 
The channel eventually became makeup tutorials, life updates, and artsy videos. The second channel was Dracula Vault, which was similar to Onision's Encore channel that he created that same day. Both of those channels were just extra content and footage that were not good enough for their main channels. Shiloh's videos on both of her channels were very similar to Greg's at that time, as Onision helped her edit her videos, ensuring that he had even more of a hand in controlling her life at the time. I say this because, according to a Google Doc that documents Onision's abuse over the years, at this time, it reads, Shiloh's abusive relationship escalates. Greg demands that Patient Zero, also known as Shiloh, wear no feminine clothing, no makeup outside of film videos, and no padded bra. Shiloh is given graphic t-shirts and baggy hoodies, and boys' pants from Target. If you are wondering why Onision tries to rob women of their femininity, he has done this before in his relationship prior with his ex-wife Skye, but to a lesser extent. Greg likes to break down what makes a person themselves so he can ultimately control them. This destruction of Shiloh gets worse as the relationship continues. Not only did this man, who appears to be more pizza than human, deprive this barely legal girl of her femininity, but he also did not allow Shiloh to have any online accounts without giving him the password, and also prevented her from general contact with her friends and family. In part one, I discussed how isolation is a common sign of an abusive relationship. Onision had done this with Skye, but Skye and he were similar ages. With the much younger Shiloh, Onision most likely saw an opportunity to use his advanced age to experiment with manipulating those more vulnerable than him. This is a trait that escalated out of control as of late, but I am getting ahead of myself. Onision is also very obsessed with vegetarianism, something he was militant about in previous years as well. And therefore, he does not allow Shiloh to eat meat. When she was recently asked about the warning signs of Greg's lunacy, Shiloh points to early on in the relationship, whilst they were still in Canada. The first incident, which was in Toronto, um, between January and April, uh, I found boudoir photos of his ex-wife's sister. On you had what kind of photos now? Pornography. Pornography of his ex-wife's sister. Yes, I just prefer to call it boudoir because it was very much so classy. Um, but she uh, she had those, um, was, was doing that privately at the time, and he had those photos on his computer. Um, I had found them. He confessed to me that this was something that he masturbated to and started to show me all of the pornography that he watches. Um, and the first pornography that he ever showed me was an anime character getting, um... Let's have a slow clap for Greg, Supreme Gentleman. While in Canada, the two get tattoos. Shiloh got Gregory tattooed on the back of her neck. Greg got Remember Love tattooed to his wrists. On April 23rd, 2011, Greg uploaded a video revealing his new tattoos. Hey guys, I got two tattoos, technically. I mean, apart they're two tattoos and together they kind of look like one because they're directly connected. On my left wrist, as you can see, it says, remember. And on my right wrist, it says, love. I got this tattoo because right now, more than ever, I need to remember love. In it, he talked about how thankful he was to have Shiloh there for him. Greg later said Shiloh came up with the idea to get the Gregory tattoo. I didn't ask her to get that tattoo. She actually surprised me with it. And I was kind of overwhelmed by it because believe it or not, I've never asked anyone to tattoo Greg or anything like Greg on their body. But <laughs> Greg's ex, Adrian, claimed in a leaked email that Greg had told her that it was Shiloh's idea to get tattoos together after one of their short breakups. She claims he was originally supposed to get Shiloh on his wrist, but last second got remember love instead. Onision isolated Shiloh further because right after her 18th birthday, they moved to Washington from their apartment in Canada. They waited till she was 18 because Shiloh could not leave the country without her mother's written consent prior. According to the young pop star, Greg manipulated her into cutting off her parents from her life. Shiloh says she spent the night of her 18th birthday in a hotel so Greg could fly her out the next morning. Now, Shiloh was cut off from her support in Canada and left alone with Later on, in 2019, Shiloh says living out there basically destroyed her career for at least a time. Did he ask you or did he try to derail your career? Um, he brought me as far away from it as he could. Onision and Shiloh were living in an apartment together now, and the last video they shot in Canada was a now-deleted video about Shiloh's 18th birthday, which is April 25th, in case you're wondering. 
So, the first drama that Onision was facing this year was one that involved his forums in the month of May. A young girl who went by the username Smokey got banned for something dumb from the forums. When I say dumb, she allegedly photoshopped a forum member's face onto a picture of a girl in a bikini. Considering Onision used his forums to later rate 13-year-olds in their bathing attire, this seems rather tame. Smokey then made a video titled, Unfortunately, dot dot dot, banned crying face. I just got banned from the Onision forums. <laughs> it is right there, banned. <laughs> I just don't know what to do. <laughs> what do you think Greg did about this? If you guessed talking to Smokey privately, you'd be wrong. And if you guessed the even more reasonable, move on with your life and let the mods handle it, you'd be wrong again. Because Greg uploaded a video mocking Smokey. A lot of viewers really disliked Onision mocking this clearly upset girl, so Greg acted in the way one would expect from the narcissistic cow, and deleted any video comments that criticized him, and eventually just straight up deleted the video. But as everyone knows, that didn't wipe away this early mark on his history. This is all rather boring, I know. It does get quite insane from here. Hold on to your butts, cause here comes the fun part. Fun from the standpoint of laughing at a trash fire, not fun for anyone involved with Onision. So, here we are. I believe it is here in the timeline, but I could be wrong. Craig and Shiloh get into a major breakup in June. The breakup might have been in April. It's one of their many breakups, but I just stuck it in the June section, and that's where we are right now. It's not important when it happened, just why it happened, but we're in June right now, okay? Got it. They broke up because Shiloh caught Greg jerking his undersized wee wee to anime teddies. According to an email later released from an ex of Onision, which we will get into later, one of the times him and Shiloh broke up was because he had problems jerking off to hentai, and she was disgusted by it. Onision's obsession with being sexual is another trait he has shown over the years. According to the Google Doc detailing his abuse, during this time, Shiloh slept on the floor next to his editing bay so that she could sexually service him whenever she woke up often eight times a day. This level of sexual activity left her scarred as it was her first sexual relationship she ever had as a newly legal teenager. The trauma of being with the perpetual man-child caused Shallow to begin to unknowingly have petite male seizures in her sleep from the stress. Also during this time, Onision made another appearance on Tosh.0, where he sings another stupid song involving bananas. Hey, Daniel! What? I'm a knife! What'd you say? And Tosh uses it as an excuse to look at some chick's boobs. This is probably a career high for Greg, as I guess it's kinda cool being on TV for a second time now, but he looks dumb, I'd be embarrassed. Shiloh and Greg begun posting a lot of videos. Shiloh was very similar to Greg in the LOL, so random, that was popular at that time. I run like the wind! Fans seemed to genuinely like her at this point, and even some to this day still express that they miss Shiloh and that her humor was more compatible with him. Lucky for Shiloh, she stopped being stuck in 2011, unlike Greg. On June 16th, Greg uploaded a video called Prank, colon, Shaved Girlfriend. Uh, we decided to play a prank on her, and that's what we're about to do. So, hope you enjoy it. Oh. <laughs> she is out. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna be so pissed. Many people thought it was a cruel prank, but Shiloh was in on it and simply wanted the hairstyle because she wanted to look like Skrillex. Although the choice in style inspiration is questionable, what becomes of her hair later on is much more messed up. The stress of constantly needing to service Onision's dongle takes a turn for the worst for the young girl from Canada. Because on June 22nd, Shiloh suffered a grand mal seizure. Instead of it being caused by consuming the amount of alcohol necessary to deal with the reality of losing your virginity to a pimple dick, it was due to stress. Making this even more romantic, it happened right after Greg left her alone in the shower, after telling her that she was, quote, morbidly obese and that she has to lose weight for him to lift her. According to Shiloh, she weighed about 135 pounds at this time, which just goes to show how much of a weak man Mr. Onion is. And um, so I had never felt that way before. And he left me crying, hyperventilating, actually, because I was very distraught. 
in the shower. He left me there. Um, and things started to get really crazy. So like I felt all of these tingles in my face and I'm really hyperventilating. And then I just kind of conked out in there. Now in between the time of how I got from there to beside his desk, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but that was a grand mal seizure from what I know. Um, and it took memory from me. Uh, I woke up not knowing who he was. I had lost a good three years. The result of these seizures caused Shallow to be in an infantile state where she believed she was four years old and thought Greg had kidnapped her. Now, I want you, the viewer, to think of what you would do in this situation. If you answered, film this traumatic event and then post it so your subscribers can make a spectacle out of your significant other, then you think just like Greg and like, yikes. So Greg filmed this breakdown of Shiloh, who is wet and shaking and only covered in a blanket, and proceeded to post the video in the now infamous video titled Shiloh Forgot Me, exposing the 18 year old to millions of viewers. Look at this, look at this. Hey, hey, calm down. You're, you're in my house, okay? Why? No, 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 this, it's okay, it's okay. Look, I'll show you, I'll show you. I'll show you. No, 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 I'll show you. Look, 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 I'll show you, okay? No, 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 oh, I'm not gonna touch you, Bill. Please don't hurt me. Look, okay. Please don't hurt me. I I'm going to YouTube, watch. Okay, this is you. Oh, God. This is, this is you, look. Look at it. This video caused a gigantic storm. Greece did delete the video, but the internet doesn't forget. Plenty of people thought they were faking this for attention, laughing at how Onision responds to a manic girl by showing her his YouTube videos. I'm going to YouTube, watch. Okay, this is you. You've been having a lot of memory loss problems lately, and that's why you had this issue and also reminding Shiloh that she is vegetarian. How's the vegan cheese? <laughs> Which, to be honest, if this video was fake, it's kind of funny. But it turns out those who laughed at her are kind of actually assholes. Because according to Shiloh, now Gerg Free says this is all real. Known sock salesman, Mr. Repsion made his first appearance at this time, fresh-faced, and made a video where he talked about how disturbing this all was. I only mention Repsion here because this starts the beautiful relationship Repsion develops over the years with Grease Jackson. Repsion is a bit, um... Now, I don't... To me, when I watched, started watching this video, Tears actually started coming down my eyes. But he does look like he's 12, and he ends up being a fun part of the Onision lore romp. Shiloh posts to a blog the very next day confirming that yes, she did indeed lose three years of her memory, and defends Greg for not taking her to the doctor. To be honest, Greg probably convinced her the doctor was a bad idea, because he didn't feel like using his YouTube bucks to pay for his ill girlfriend, since he didn't have gainful employment, thus no healthcare. Good thing Greg took Shiloh away from her family in a place where she could receive free healthcare, right guys? Greg likes to see himself as a savior, a trait I discussed in part one. And good thing he was here for Shiloh. No, I'm not being sarcastic at all. Shut the fuck up. People at this time were very critical of Onision, so he started out on his campaign of proving he didn't do anything wrong by posting the video titled, I Respect Her Wishes. In the video, Onision tells everyone that he did the right thing by not taking his girlfriend to a doctor to check if she might have life-threatening neurological damage because he told Shiloh she didn't want to go. I mean, and she herself says that she doesn't want to go to a doctor. It definitely wasn't because Onision didn't want to pay American health care prices. Totally. He also shows a disdain for health professionals. I don't see what doctors are going to do to help Shiloh um, because we know what triggers her memory loss and that's uh, severe stress. Something that has carried on even when it comes to his own kids that he has in the future. Something I didn't tell you guys is pretty much the whole time I was at the first hospital, I was on my smartphone Googling my kid's condition. And my research is what led me to conclude my son likely did not have testicle torsion in the first place before any tests were done. It also led me to diagnose my own kid with a rash before any doctor did. But this is because Greg, with his high school education, knows more than the doctor, obviously. Also in the video, he introduces is a puppy that they got. That's that. Oh, and here's our dog, Freya. 
we have a dog for you now. This is the first of many adoptions Greg will get and then toss out quickly when they become inconvenient. I know adopting a dog while a loved one is going through magical medical issues screams responsible pet owners. So that might be shocking to you viewers. Greg continued to use Shiloh's medical problems for attention by publishing a blog where he informs his very special fans that Shiloh had just made him a video despite being in an infantile mindset and that he also wanted to thank everyone who supported him through this. Greg refused to let things go another blog two days later on June 26th to react to the increasing haters criticizing him for exploiting and improperly treating his sick girlfriend. This blog is titled, Update on Greg and Shiloh, where Greg details the events of the seizure and memory loss, and also skewed the event to paint anyone disagreeing with his decisions as bad people. He wrote, Despite repeated public statements to the contrary, massive amounts of people accuse them both of acting slash lying, and tells readers, Shiloh refuses medical treatment as she does not wish to be a lab rat, and that he respected Shiloh's rights to refuse. He then adds, that despite all of this, 30% of Onision commenters now hate Onision for respecting Shiloh's rights. Because that is what people had a problem with. That's it, Greg. People were mad at you for respectfully exploiting your girlfriend. Greg's campaign doesn't stop. Because the next day, he posts another blog titled, Respect for Shiloh. He tells readers in the blog that, A lot of you feel I am a good boyfriend for handling this the way I have. Which, to be honest, if most people were saying he's doing a good job, would he have spent three days posting videos and blogs trying to convince people he was right? Really makes you think. He also tells people that him filming this was great because Shiloh personally used the footage to witness exactly what she went through and approved of it being posted online. Which, of course, means nobody ever questioned him again and he was drama-free for the rest of the year. Just kidding. Greg didn't let Shiloh's seizure stop him from networking because in between writing blogs telling everyone that he's an innocent boy, he managed to meet up with Jeffree Star, who tweeted about meeting him on June 27th. Years later, Greg went on to claim that Jeffree Star had sexually harassed him. He uh, went through this whole thing. We're in a dark studio, really, really dark, almost no lights, and he's just sitting there on a couch uh, just saying all these things to me, and that was the only time I ever really talked to the guy. And I'm making this video. This guy that I'm talking about, is, I think he's donated a lot to charity, which is really cool, and I don't, I, don't, I don't know if he's a good person or a bad person or whatever. I'm not trying to say that he is a good or bad person. What I am saying is that if anyone else has been sexually harassed uh, by anyone in general, um, man, female, whatever, you know, straight, gay, whatever. If somebody's saying things to you of a sexual nature, you, and they're not laughing, they're not joking, they're not making a video that's a comedy or anything like that. They're literally just straight face saying this to you alone in a room. You shouldn't be treated like that. <laughs> Makes me wonder what kind of world you gotta live in that while constantly posting blogs and videos, telling people that filming a woman having a seizure is a good idea, you're also being filled up by a MySpace star. Spoiler, it's the world that Greg makes up in his head. In between being molested by MySpace emos and posting damage control, Greg made another video, this time about his new puppy named Freya. The dog, obviously being raised in a stable environment, for some reason is behaving oddly. We are informed thanks to a video cleverly titled Strange Dog Behavior, posted the same day as the Jeffree Star tweet. And we noticed that our dog was licking a piece of clothing. That piece of clothing was Shiloh's panties. And it was licking the crotch region. And she's, she's perverted. She keeps trying to go for my crotch. And I'm like, what is going on? Hearing about Greg's sexual aggression makes me wonder if the dog picked something up. Now, remember how Shiloh shaved her head to look like world-renowned maestro, Skrillex? Also note, in all of these videos, Shiloh is sporting the half-shaved look. Also note, Shiloh is going through some shit here. All right, so the next appearance, to my knowledge, is a video Shiloh uploaded eight days after her seizure titled, Bald. Now I know what you're thinking. Shiloh, being an artist, decided to express herself with a non-traditional haircut. Wrong. Amidst Shiloh having to deal with having seizures, one night while having sex, Greg shaved all of her hair off to degrade her, and so she can be his good little his words. Shiloh later reports that Greg took her into the bathroom and shaved her head, which made her feel ugly and defeminized. He was, he was having sex with me and he told me, I, I want you to shave your head. In the middle of this intimate role. In the middle of, in the middle of sex, yeah. And so he took me off into the bathroom and he shaved my head in the tub and then continued to have sex with me. 
So Greg wanted to use Shiloh's bald head as a gag in videos. Yeah, and then and then he made me do a lot of videos. Well, he tried. I think I only got one of them out. He made me do a lot of videos as bald characters, like The Last Airbender. He wanted me to do Lex Luthor. The only one ever being seen was one where he made her be Avatar The Last Airbender. So where we are currently now is June 2011. Greg is acting like a BDSM master. If someone half literate based their knowledge of BDSM on a 14 year old's Twilight fanfiction. On Independence Day, July 4th, Greg and Shiloh have a breakup. It was unlike their previous short breakups, this one was major. Being the oversharing, exceptional individual Onision is, he uploaded a video telling everyone about the breakup titled, We Broke Up. In the video, he mimics what he believes to be the behavior of a sad person. It was, it was over something small, but a lot of stuff in the past has come up, and this was kind of like the, uh, the needle that broke the camel's back. What was it? The tooth? Whatever. Going as so far to show footage he claimed was him trying to talk the last time they broke up. But in reality, it was him LARPing as an actual human, feeling emotions. This whole thing does not end in a, oh, we broke up and we move on sort of way. It doesn't just cease with this because, first, Shiloh, the day of the breakup video, went on her Dracula site to tell people that she might be prego. Note, now Shiloh is bald, single, and possibly pregnant. She then posted a video that was quickly deleted called, I love you, which went through her and Onision's relationship in a positive light. Then, three days later, she wrote a blog about the dog, Freya, now saying that the dog had graduated from chewing her undies to trying to bite her her crotch. This ends up being a meme because in a later relationship, Greg decided to tell a girl strange things his mother claimed Shiloh had done with their dog. He even went so far as to tell this girl that his mother informed him that during this time, Shiloh tried to force his little dog to eat her out, and the dog got scared to a bitter crotch. I love how Greg told his ex all of this, like, oh gee, my mom said these disgusting things about my ex, not me, I'm an innocent little angel. So apparently while Greg and his mom are gossiping about dogs and peanut butter, Greg is at face value trying to still be nice to Shiloh. Greg posted a blog on the 10th of July about doing work and how he planned to just watch a movie with his friend Shiloh, smiley face, when he was done. Greg concluded this blog with, gotta say, something I've learned about myself is when I'm not in a relationship, I love, love, love to work. And ask readers, do you guys feel the same? If you're not in a relationship, do you feel like there is a hole to fill? Greg answers his own question by filling that hole with a big old dick of drama. Cause a few days later, he uploaded Shiloh Threatened Me to his main channel. In the video, Greg is in a hotel room, hair drying from one of his usual 18 showers a day. He tells everyone that Shiloh tried to use her elite Canadian super skills to hack him. In the last 24 hours, Shiloh has threatened to destroy me. Destroy being a quote. Shiloh has threatened me in the past in regards to hacking me. He informs everyone that she is now in a mental asylum. When she was taken away to Western State, the mental asylum. And he was putting this up to get sympathy. I mean, tells everyone he was uploading this. And if anything happens to me, if anything happens to my channel, at least you know the truth. Shiloh responded to Greg's video with a blog post on the 17th, where she talks about being pregnant with Greg's child, which I don't believe she was actually pregnant at this time, and this post might just be her saying she is either possibly pregnant or something else. She also explains that when she said, I'm going to ruin you, she meant with truth, not lies. She also details that Canadians are now crossing the border to get Greg. Now, instead of just airing out a small tidbit of his dirty laundry, Onision decided to toss the basketful out the window, and and sometime after this, he uploaded a video titled The Truth to try to embarrass Shiloh further. The video starts out reading, In the last 24 hours, I've been publicly slandered by my ex. The time for talking is over. Decide for yourself who is right. It then starts footage which obviously depicts a young woman in the middle of a mental breakdown. You know, a very vulnerable situation that nobody wants to be broadcasted to millions. I want to be able to talk. I want people to realize he's been telling people lies. The video is a hard watch. It honestly is what I think of when I think of Onision to this day, and I have yet to see any other big YouTube personality ever doing anything. <laughs> oh, 
quite like it. In it, you can see a bold, visibly upset Shiloh crying and yelling. Hello? Hi. Get the camera off of me, I swear to God. While Greg follows her around with a camera. He has a camera on me! He has a camera on me right now! Get the camera off of me! Why do you have a camera on me? He is a complete foil to her emotional state. He is calm and collected. Get the camera off of me. Buddy, the problem is, is that when I was on the phone with my Aunt Kelly and my mom, you threatened to kill yourself in the background, so that's two witnesses. I'm going to seriously tell everybody what you've done to me. I haven't done anything to you. I'm going to destroy you. I haven't done anything to you. Yes, you have. You destroyed everything. Shiloh repeatedly asked him to stop filming her. In the video, she says if she goes back to her mom, I'm forced to go back there. She's going to kick me out and I have nothing. The thing here is, Shiloh's mom was very against Greg, but Greg caused Shiloh to be isolated from her mom. She, we went through a very bad fallout. I had told her that I didn't want to speak to her um, because I thought she was responsible for calling the police and PA. Um, and also, he had really kind of pushed me into not speaking to her anymore because of how she didn't approve of what was going on. I'm sure Shiloh's mom wanted her daughter to come home, rather than be made a mockery by some much older man exploiting her for views. Shiloh then cries about him destroying her career. I do not give a shit. What you have done to me is irreversible. You have destroyed any way for me to support myself. I have nothing. You have destroyed me. Can you take a step back? Which, according to recent interviews, is, well, true. It sounds like he got off on having you essentially end your career while he used you to promote him. Oh, the ultimate submission. The video ends with the cops arriving and Greg fleeing his home to live with Sierra in LA because, as he said in his Shiloh Threaten Me video, Because of who Shiloh knows, because of the things that she said to me, I do fear for my own life. Greg, at this time now hiding from what people believe to be the Canadian Mafia, wrote a journal entry titled, I Ran Away From Home, where he proceeds to tell everyone how awful the young girl is and how reasonable he is, sending people after Shiloh to attack her. He concluded his rambling with, Note to everyone reading this, Shiloh claimed to be a hacker. If she is indeed a hacker, this message may not survive on my posting it alone. Shiloh, the bald Canadian abuse victim, is going to super hack Greg. Greg posted another, more cheery blog titled, Lost Yet Still Somehow Moving Forward. So I guess he was safe from super hacking. So this is where we are in the timeline. Because I keep having to remind myself as I write this because it is so ridiculous. Shell has been sent away, a shell of the vibrant pop star she was at the beginning of the year. And Onision is running away to LA from the Canadian Mafia, which actually is just a meme and it was Shiloh's dad who was ready to tear Greg a new one and that was who he was running from. Shiloh's mom picked up her broken daughter from America and took her back to Canada and Greg continued to smear her publicly, gaslighting her from afar and probably making more these sketches on YouTube, but whatever. Greg soon decided that the most appropriate thing to do when going through a nightmarish breakup that points to you being a mentally abusive a-hole is to, you guessed it, email your ex-wife who you left in order to ruin a new girl. On July 18th, Greg emails Sky, I don't expect you to want me back, and expresses confusion with his life. She doesn't respond. If you want to play a drinking game while you watch, Go ahead and have a drink every time Onisan either emails his ex-wife, Sky, or her sister, Alicia. You'll get a really nice blackout drunk. Chris Hansen recently gave a nice summary of what state Shiloh is in at this point. Um, so you're shot mentally at this point. Wiped oh, yeah. out. You go, you go to a psychiatric facility or a psychiatric facility in a medical facility, and your yeah. mom comes to get this shell of a young woman. Yeah. I want to emphasize how Shiloh was viewed at this time. Sometime after this, in July, Shiloh uploaded my last video, in which she is crying uncontrollably. She ended up taking down the video, but someone on July 22nd re-uploaded it with this description. Story behind this video. On July 22nd, 2011, Greg threw away all of the Twinkies and ice cream sandwiches in the house. Shiloh was furious, so she ran away from home to her parents' house, shaved her head, and made this video. This is her final goodbye. The comments are all old, some sympathizing with Shiloh, some taking Greg's side. This just goes to show, a man can, over the course of a year and a half, cheat on his wife, divorce her publicly, slander her, film a new barely legal girl having a seizure, film a barely legal girl having a mental breakdown, and still help people defend him. Old YouTube was wild.
Greg doesn't let Skye's lack of response deter him, because seven days later he emails Sky again. Greg has been single for less than a month now, so instead of dealing with being single, he tried to get back with Skye. He emailed her that he still wanted to be with her. She did not respond to this email either. Greg's constant need to be in a relationship escalates pretty out of control during the 2011 time period. Also on this day, Greg posted a blog titled, Am I Finally Free? In this blog, he dons his best nice guy TM fedora and laments about his singlehood. That isn't even a month old. He concluded this entry with, If I cannot be a husband, let me be a hero. If I cannot be desired company, then let me be the one you call on your darkest night. God, what a fat- Greg takes a break from harassing women for just one day, and on the 25th, after silence from Sky, he uploaded a video he titled, Sky Called. In the video, he informs everyone of a conversation he had in his own head with Sky. Though, in the video, he portrayed it to viewers like it actually happened in reality. The good news is, is that I got a call from Sky, and it was the first time that we had talked in seven months, so it was a very exciting thing. And we decided that we're going to go ahead and finalize the divorce, and uh, I guess just be friends. And they were all cool, and totally happy, and totally friends. And when a fan asked why he would talk to Sky again after she stole from him, Greg replied to that with, Sky actually wasn't insane. Sky hasn't responded to any of these emails. The next day, Shiloh tried to clear her name once again with a blog post titled, Winner, detailing how Onision would complain about her body, something she mentioned has stuck with her to this day. The, the, the body shaming. The body shaming is probably what stuck with me the most. And also how he would break up with her all the time. Like one time he dumped her, it was because he wanted to sleep, and another time he dumped her because she asked about a number on his phone. Which he actually referenced in another video where he says the phone glitched and added a contact. For some reason, my phone glitched out and added someone's name to my contact list. Well, the girlfriend I had at the time was a very jealous, insecure girl, so she freaked out on me. Like, really, 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 really freaked out. Like, not just like, what's this name doing on your phone? Like, WHAT IS THIS NAME?! Ah! Which, okay, uh, Greg goes on how honest he is. Just FYI, phones don't glitch and add contacts. She also described how he was a general douchebag and tried to ruin her career when he found out she smoked weed. Shiloh panicked, fearing losing her career. So after hearing that, she refused to leave the room because she was scared he would ruin her life. So he forcefully removed her and she got hurt and he called the cops. The next day, he wouldn't listen to her and screamed at her, get the fuck out of my house. He called his family members and told them she was crazy. She asked to speak to them to tell her side of the story, but he refused. She threatened to kill herself and he wouldn't let her call her mom. The cop took her away with a pair of clothes and a piece of paper with her mom's number. He left her for LA and left her alone in his house with $13 and no phone. The blog was deleted when they got back together. I'm not sure how true this blog is, as Shiloh did not add these details in her recent interview, but Onision trying to ruin people over marijuana, it wouldn't be the only time he did this. Like, is that not abusive to you? Do you think that's a fair trade for me telling you that I smoked weed? All of these things seem pretty Onision, but I don't know if Shiloh at the time was in the right state of mind to be able to be reliable. You know, being publicly attacked all the time by rabid Onision fans can skew how you publicly tell your story. Meanwhile, Onision was trying to see if he can secure another lay since Sky isn't responding and emailed Alicia about Shiloh. He told her how they broke up a lot and how Shiloh threatened to kill herself and he called the cops. Alicia didn't respond. Well, thank God Onision's lust for Snatch soon got derailed because VidCon happened on July 29th. The 2011 VidCon happened during the peak of Onision's channel's highest subscriber rank after the first wave of the 2011 relationship drama. Greg made a video while at VidCon, dancing around in a banana suit over top of bulletproof vest. I'm not joking, he wore a bulletproof vest to VidCon. You're not that important, Greg. VidCon was also where the legendary Shane Dawson and Onision kiss took place. That's right, folks. This event filled the panties of many budding Fujoshis with moisture. This included a young girl from New Mexico by the name of Taylor Anderson. Taylor Anderson would eventually become Onision's husband. After VidCon, Onision got into a secret relationship with a YouTuber named Hannah Minx, who was known for doing video lessons on Japanese words. She was also known for her uh, bubbly personality. After posting some VidCon videos, Onision went back to telling all his viewers about how bad he is at relationships. On August 20th, he uploaded a video called Straight to Love, where he candidly tells viewers how he jumps into relationships headfirst. Um, 
I tend to jump in relationships head first, kind of like in the video I uploaded to my main channel today, my second channel. In regards to proposing to Jess, it was a mock proposal. The people think he's a total psychopath. Um, and I also played off, you know, rumors that I'm a total psychopath when the camera's off or whatever, which is, which is fun. So, no, it's not. It's not fun. <laughs> and he can't be happy without a girlfriend. And I'm starting to realize not only can I not be happy without a girlfriend, um, someone to hold my heart and go, it's pretty, it's pretty, Greg, look at your pretty heart. I can't. I can't survive without that, and I can't survive without someone cuddling me every night and telling me, your whiskers are uncomfortably prickly today. <laughs> I believe he may still be with Hannah Minx at this time. He then posted a video called My Sad Love Life. Guys, you know what I can't stand in relationships is roller coasters. I don't like this. <laughs> like through the whole thing, it's like, oh, I'm so into you and I don't care, but now I'm into you, but uh, now I don't care, but now I'm into you, but now I don't care. And what I mean by that is like when people, they act like they care about you and then they're totally unavailable for like a day and a half or two days or three days. Then in the video, Greg plays a voicemail from Shiloh and proceeds to try to emotionally manipulate his viewers into pitying him more. It's a voicemail from a random stranger. Let's find out who it was. Du, du, du. Voicemail. You have one unheard message. Interesting. Let's hear who the message is from. Well, that was my ex who should stop calling me because we're over. It seemed to have worked because here's an example of the comments I found under the video. This person comments, After he heard the voice message, he tried to sound like he doesn't care, though indeed you can see his pain. And I think him and Hannah are still dating up to this point, but then Onion Boy posted a video the next day titled, She Wanted My Body, Not My Heart. In the video, Greg says right before filming a video with Black Box TV, he was dumped by someone he was not officially dating. After being dumped, he sucked it up, filmed the video for Black Box TV, ate at Dunny's, then cried on the highway. He said he then went home and tried not to cry in front of his roommate, Seer, and finished his night by crying in the shower and finally went to bed at 5 a.m., still crying. The following morning, he talked on the phone with his ex-girlfriend and realized she wanted sex without love, which she does not believe in. Note, this was an online relationship and was very brief. Greg threw out the love word early on, allegedly, which no doubt scared Hannah to end the relationship. He also uploaded a video called Broken on this day, Riveting and deep, Greg. I mentioned he was filming a video for Black Box TV while this breakdown went down. The video was supposed to be a horror movie, but it ended like a lot of Onision's comedy sketches, and I'm using the term comedy loosely here, where Onision decided to try to LARP as a badass and beat up and or shoot everyone that isn't as great as he is in his own eyes. So now we enter the next arc of 2011, Adrian, Onision's Texan mommy GF. According to Adrian, she first became interested in Greg in early 2011. After a breakup, this 26-year-old Texan woman began watching many of his Speaks videos and began following his relationship drama with Shiloh, and by August, she joined the forums and began to post. Onision is living with Seer at this point. Okrayon becomes the pairing name for Seer and Greg's budding homosexual relationship. Hi, I'm Greg and we're gay! <laughs> 
but despite Sears' feminine appearance, Greg got tired of him and decided to pursue a relationship with Adrian on his forums. Now, I'm going to mix what Onision put out into the public about their relationship, along with details Adrian later put out there when she dropped an email. I'll talk about Onision's meltdown when that email does get dropped, but I think using the email as a testimony for Greg's lunacy is important at this time. Now, this is, of course, from the perspective of Adrian, but I like to think that what she said is 100% the truth, because what is described is some of the funniest shit I've ever read. Like, Onision is a complete and utter freak, and it is hilarious to me. So Adrian, or AJ, commented on a post on Onision's forum, which Onision liked, and so Greg proceeded to ask when they were gonna get married. AJ ended up emailing Greg jokingly, and within minutes, Greg responded to her and offered to fly out and meet her. I'm like flabbergasted. AJ being a little more reasonable is like, nah, let's keep talking, and then they exchange numbers. Right after having her number, Onision immediately grabs his phone and begins to text her, and the two texted back and forth till 3 a.m. The next day, they agree to Skype and AJ describes the Skype session as the world's biggest red flag. So right off the bat in this Skype section, Greg informed her about everything in his life. He told her about his alimony to Sky, about YouTubers who propositioned him, and, you know, information she should not be privy to, that Onision had no right in telling her. Greg then started to grill her about who she slept with. Again, this is their first e-date. From what AJ described in her email, Greg just talked about himself and didn't really let her say much. And at one point he told her, you know, if I keep talking to you, I am going going to fall for you. I hope you're prepared for that. Are you going to let me down? AJ, for some reason, did not run away yet, but it seemed that now that they were e-dating, they have to Skype every night. The night after their first Skype session, AJ told Greg she was too tired to Skype. This is a reasonable excuse to any reasonable person, but not to Onision, who proceeded to guilt her. He used priceless lines, such as saying, she wasn't fighting for love, his words. AJ didn't fall for his manipulation, and just said, it and went to bed. Onision didn't know how to handle this and proceeded to blow up her phone. AJ didn't respond as Greg had hoped, so the next morning Greg apologized, tail between his legs. Things were fine after this, for all about a day. In just the first three days of online dating Grace Jackson, AJ says he had begun being manipulative. We again are only on day three here, and on day three, Greg started asking her to move out to Los Angeles with him. AJ responded to this request that she wanted to test them out first, and suggested they plan on one of them flying flying out for a weekend to see if it works. Gray responded to this completely reasonable statement by telling AJ that if she really loved someone, she would give up everything to be with them. Day three. Eventually, she got him to agree to be more patient, but Greg being reasonable <laughs> didn't last. Here's my favorite part of this. After convincing him not to pressure her to uproot her entire life, Onision tells her all about his uncircumcised penis and then asked all sorts of sexual details about her life. Day three of Skype dates, and she already knows the state of his genitals. Onision also took this time to hint at impregnating her. I know it is theorized by sites like lolcal.farms that Onision has a pregnancy fetish. I tend to think they might be right. First, the first thing he ever said to me when he met me in that hotel room in PA um, was I can't wait to get you pregnant. It's weird. During this early courtship, on September 3rd, Onision posted a video titled, I Found Her. I got a girlfriend. Her name's Adrian. Um, today's been kind of a hard day for me, and it kind of ended really well. I asked her out and she said yes. So that's great. The reception was mixed. A lot of fans were tired of hearing about Onision's train wreck of a love life after Shiloh. They were not wrong because uh, immediately one day later, Greg posted the video, I got dumped. Hey guys, I am about to make the most pathetic announcement in the history of announcements right now. I'm single again. I'm, I'm such a loser, oh my god. <laughs> And as I promised you, I'm not revealing any information because I don't lie. Wrong. That is absolutely Wrong. proved over and over again. Wrong. It's like Onision was trying to make a record for the world's shortest public relationship. Now, I want to tell you why they broke up because this is some psycho shit girls tell their friends about and all the girls' non-agreement that, yes, girl, that is indeed some psycho shit. They broke up. 
Actually, I'm not sure which breakup this is uh, that caused the video that he posted because Adrian details many reasons they broke up all over the course of just a few days. So I'll just go ahead and describe each of them to you. One was because Adrian had plans with friends, which she told Onision about and told them that she couldn't Skype that night. This was a no-go for Mr. Onion. He immediately called AJ to tell her that she didn't truly love him, that once again, she was not fighting for love. AJ wrote, he told me he doesn't understand how I can choose my friends over him, that in order to be with him, that I have to prioritize him over everyone. Then we ended up getting into this additional argument where I asked him, what's going to happen if we live together? And I want to go out with my friends one night. His response was, well, I'll go with. We are supposed to do everything together. I added, I meant without you. He told me that he thought I was being shady and he doesn't deserve to be treated like this. Even though I thought he was acting like a five-year-old cult leader in the making, we played phone tag for about an hour. Eventually, I got him on the line long enough to tell him that friendships require constant maintenance and I'm not going to neglect the people I love because he is insecure with being left alone for a little while. I told him that when I said I am not going to neglect the people I love, that I met him as well. That there is such a thing as time management. I told him that healthy adult couples require time apart. What's the point of me sharing my life with him when I have no life other than him to share. He might as well date himself. The end result of this drama was AJ's plans got ruined with her friends who went home after AJ got preoccupied with a nut blowing up her phone. Greg eventually admitted he was in the wrong, but that doesn't stop him from doing the exact same thing while AJ was with her friends a few days later. And this time, she was away from her computer, phone, and Skype. So when AJ eventually had time to return to her communication devices, she had seen that Onision had blown them up with ultimatums of breaking up if she didn't answer. AJ did what most of us would do. She got blasted drunk and just started sending Onision pics of chocobos. This sent Greg into a narc rage, of course, and AJ ended her night by enjoying a drunk sleep. Here's the last breakup. All of these breakups happened between September 3rd and September 10th. This next one, they get into some fight because Greg flips a sh over AJ getting a piercing. She screams and chews him out. He then calls her back crying, and AJ writes about this, saying, He toggled between crying and being silly. I'm a banana. He didn't know how to process what I had said to him. He told me that no one has ever spoken to him the way I have before, that I was right. Every word out of his mouth was him trying to manipulate me, that he is a very conniving and manipulative person. He told me that he's not used to dating women, that in relationships, he's used to being a babysitter. Hmm. He told me that my independent free will scared him, and he doesn't know how to handle it. Red flag there. You would think at this point AJ would cease talking to him. They have already had enough major fights most couples get into over like a multiple month span and this is all in about a week, but no. Over the next few days, Onision posted sad boy tweets about the breakup. He also tweeted on September 5th that Sky was supporting him through his breakup. False. Sky was still not responding to him. The next day, he made a video titled Low Self Esteem. Hey guys, talking to my mom recently, um, she told me that I have a low self-esteem. I feel like I'm gonna cry. From the, from the get-go of this video, I feel like I'm gonna cry because I'm so... I pity myself. Um, she said that I have a low self-esteem because I tend to want to take care of people. Um, and when I, when I first started talking to Shane Dawson, he also said that um, he was shocked because it didn't, like, the way I described myself, I didn't sound like me. But the more people will reflect on it, um, the more I'm here. Between this time and September 10th, he and AJ start dating again. Cause that's when Onion Boy flies out to Texas. Once he got to Texas, he grabbed a rental car and get this. He drives to pick up Adrian and they <laughs> both wear mustaches. Craig was in his chibi wig and a mustache. <laughs> their mustaches get tangled during their first kiss. I think at this point I'd be more surprised if Greg met up dressed in a nice polo and a non-greasy hair, and then proceeded to take AJ on a nice date to a vegetarian restaurant. Nope. <laughs> nope. No date. Greg takes her to a hotel and immediately pressures her into sex. AJ writes, We drove back to his hotel room. We walk in the door. I set down my bag, and instantaneously, he starts making out with me. He immediately starts taking off articles of my clothing, and we had only been there for not even 30 seconds. This is really similar to Shiloh's story. AJ continues. He gets me on the bed, still kissing and touching me. Between his kisses was me going, no, 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 no. Stop! And him kissing me harder to shut me up. AJ writes that she then tried to get Greg to wait before bumping uglies, but after some aggressive pressuring, she decided it was an uphill battle and she just let Greg do what he wanted with her. The next two days are just Onision basically trying to hump AJ into submission. Let's see some of the red flags that pop up here. Within two days, Onision has talked about impregnating AJ while he's inside of her and also proposed to her. We never find out what she answered to the proposal, but... I... 
<laughs> I feel okay. So for some reason, AJ eventually agrees to move out to LA with Gurgles at the end of September. The most entertaining part of this section is what comes next. AJ says all the shit unraveled in 12 hours. I have a hard time of coming up with the exact timeline. But here's the funniest part of Greg's visit, according to AJ. AJ writes this. Let me tell you what I woke up to this morning. Please grab a towel to sit on before you read this, because you will pee yourself with laughter. I don't know how I managed to keep my composure when it was happening to me. Chi shaking and tapping me. Me. I roll over, sleepy-eyed. What? Him. Do you suck me? Me. What? No? What the fuck? I roll over and go back to sleep. I wish you could hear how he says it. He refers to blowjays as being sucked on. Ugh. Ew. When he wants a beach, he goes, suck me? He says it kind of like an Asian man at a restaurant, asking you if he would like some additional suck me with your order. He always says it with a raised inflection on the me, so it always sounds like a question. It is really very tragic. AJ went back to sleep after the suck me situation, but not for long because Greg then woke her up like an hour later acting like a five-year-old because... <sighs> he had a nightmare. Not joking. You see, Adrian was 26 at this time, and Greg was 25. Not at all a real significant age gap, but Onision was now accustomed to young women, so I think Onision saw AJ as his mommy GF. Because he told AJ that because he had a bad dream, he needed her to comfort him and love him. He was scared. Greg wanted his mommy GF to hold and protect him from bad dreams. She told him no because she wanted to sleep, and Greg responded like a normal 25-year-old adult, hid under the covers, and pouted. The next day, aka the last day Greg was going to be visiting Adrian in Texas, Adrian awoke and began to get ready to go out to lunch like they had planned. Greg was still hiding under the covers. He began to call her, and then had a meltdown because Adrian responded to him calling her with a, what? This reaction caused Greg to huddle under the covers and sob uncontrollably about how his mommy GF was a big meanie who didn't want to protect him from nightmares. When Adrian was, of course, exasperated by witnessing a 25-year-old man crying about nightmares and snapped at him, Greg responded to this by saying, Never in my life have I met someone as unloving as you. I came to you this morning scared, looking for you to hold me, but you have not loved me. I did not like how you said what to me. It was angry and violent. I don't deserve to be treated this way. Adrian snapped and yelled at him, scolding him like she was supposed to in her mommy GF role. Greg snapped out of his tragic state, and everything was fine after this. They concluded their time together, and Greg flew back to LA. They were all good. Greg uploaded a video on the 13th of September to inform the people of the state of his love life. The 13th is a Tuesday. Greg flew down on the 10th, which was a Saturday. In the video, Greg explains he just got back from visiting his girlfriend, Adrian, and says, she continues to fix every little thing that's broken in me. Which is another gigantic red flag. At the age of 25, a person should know another person isn't responsible for fixing you. Behind the scenes, though, Greg is pressuring her to abandon her job and even rehome her pets to move in with him at the drop of a hat. So spoilers, this relationship doesn't fix Greg. The very next day, Greg uploaded a video, single again. Within 24 hours, Greg has announced he has fixed things to his GF and then broke up with that GF. This isn't even their last breakup, though because they officially break up on the 19th. AJ details a couple of meltdowns Greg has on her between then and their final breakup. One fight was due to Greg deciding one night he didn't like that AJ consumed alcohol and then proceeded to call her a million times while she was at work. When they did talk on the phone, Greg informed her that he did a Twitter poll and therefore she should quit drinking for him. Greg does this other times in his life. He likes to create Twitter polls and use them in arguments as if he had conducted a scientific study. Whoa, look at Anision dropping truth bombs with a Twitter poll. They continued to argue about this, and Adrian refused to back down, resulting in him dumping her. Adrian doesn't give exact dates or times for these meltdown breakups, but this all happens between September 13th and September 19th. While this is all going down, Onision is also crying on Twitter about his love life. On the 17th, he posts a video titled, The Heart Isn't That Simple. Hey guys, I've been in love with seven girls in my life. I've been in love seven times. I was in love with Shree, Tashina, Tanya, Sky, Christine, Shiloh, and Adrian. Out of the seven, I made love to six. Have you ever thought that maybe I am, am either going through so much pain that I'm trying to, to cope with it by, by saying whatever I'm saying or doing whatever I'm doing? Or I'm actually considerate of them and trying to get them to move on, to stop liking me. You know? Because it's easier to, to move on from someone who you think is an asshole than it is to someone who you think is a great guy. You just, 
You assume so much of me. And yet, in reality, despite all these videos, you know so little. Meanwhile, Greg was spamming text messages to this poor woman about how she is mistreating him and being awful. And I guess his manipulation tactics work because this is how AJ puts it. He started sending me five-part text messages saying how much he loves me, but he can't handle being treated this way anymore. I'm sure he told me I was being violent when I was speaking to him calmly. I'm sure he said I'm disrespecting him when he's telling me everything that's wrong with me. I'm sure he said things like, this is the final time and you have not fought for love. Blah, blah, blah. Basically, he called me and told me that if I didn't drop everything to go be with him in Los Angeles right now, even though I was moving there in two or three weeks anyways, that this was over and there was no point. What was scary is that he wasn't being frantic like he normally is when we fight. He was saying these things to me as calmly and collected as if he were asking me the time of day. This change in attitude made me start to panic because I didn't know how to handle it. So for fear of losing him, or at the very least, losing him without having the upper hand and feeling rejected, I entertained the idea of complying with his wishes. Yes, he managed to push her into quitting her job and move in with him, telling her to figure out how to rehome her pets and quit her job, and that all he'll do is buy the plane ticket, and she better be on the plane in one week or it's over. What a gentleman. For some reason, AJ agreed to this. And after a few days, the two's relationship seemed fine. AJ writes, I waited a couple days to see if he changed his mind, but he seemed happy and things felt normal. So I went to work with the intent of quitting. And I sent him a text saying, I'm about to quit my job. You know, this is real and official if I do. You have to promise me that you're not going to change your mind on this and that I am not going to end up without a home or means to support myself. He promised. I quit my job. As always, things went horribly, horribly wrong. So get this. After this, AJ goes to get a massage from a friend's fiance a day later, one which she paid for. Thus, it is a professional massage. And before getting this massage, she had told Greg about getting the massage, and Greg had okayed for her to get the massage. Later, she posted a Facebook status saying her massage was sensual. Q World War III. Greg went nuts. He proceeded to phone AJ and scream about how she disrespected him and publicly humiliated him. And the reason this is? Well, AJ is bisexual. She got a massage from what I am guessing was another woman. And Greg says getting a professional massage was AJ being, quote, inappropriate with a member of one of the sexes she is attracted to. He goes on to inform AJ that she could not be trusted because she is bisexual, which is hilarious due to how Greg fetishizes the LGBT in current year. So they broke up for the final time on September 19th. That night, Greg began to suggest Adrian has STDs on his Facebook and Twitter. Adrian eventually saw what Onision had been posting about her, and having expressed previously that she did not want their relationship to be public, defended herself on her Google Plus account. Greg immediately ignored all the logical thoughts in his head, telling him to deal with this privately, and posted a video titled, She's Right. He then quickly deleted it, saying he deleted it because he made this video without reading Adrian's whole Google Plus post, because he hates to read. Yes, this is a man who will go on to write three books in the future. Here's a spoiler here. They're all bad. I know. You must be shocked. Greg continued to try to publicly humiliate Adrian. While this was happening, Shiloh friended AJ on Facebook and messaged her that she had read what AJ wrote and that she went through the exact same thing with him, offering to be someone AJ could talk to. So the next day, it's September 28th or 21st, AJ and Shiloh begin to talk. They both relate to each other's experience and what they described as Greg's shortcomings. His dick is small, get it? Oh, and here's the creepy thing. Shiloh told Adrian Greg would scream Alicia's name when he came. Yes, this guy's sister Alicia. I see nothing wrong here. Then at some point, Greg decided to take a break from his campaign to publicly humiliate some random girl from Texas. And on September 21st, he calls Adrian 27 times, leaves 13 voicemails, 10 texts, four videos, four comments on Google+, an email, and a Facebook message, all over a 10 hour period. Thank God all the voicemails were saved and later got dropped so we can listen to them. In the first voicemail, Onision admits that Adrian was in the right. Hey, I read everything you wrote, and I made a response video that people to go check out what you wrote. 90% of what you said was totally true. In the second voicemail, he offers to give her a place. Listen, um, I just, I don't know why I missed it the first time, but I read across uh, the part where you said something about being homeless and jobless. Um, dude, you're not, you're not homeless. Come on. Like, seriously, I am here. If you need anything, just let me know. Okay? Sort of. Third video is absolutely pathetic. Greg calls her to tell her a funny story because... Hey, I just wanted to share a really awesome story. Something crazy I just went through. Um, and I'm calling you because, um, honestly, the only other person I talk to won't uh, is, is at school right now. 
He tells her about how he tried to get Shiloh to prove she was pregnant by peeing on a stick in front of him. This is so funny. Okay, so Cedar comes in and he's like, well, why don't you just have her take a pregnancy test? And I'm like saying they're going, why don't I have her take a pregnancy test? I'm like, I'm going to, okay, okay, well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to have her pee on a stick in front of me on Skype. And that way there's no fooling around. She proves that she's pregnant and then we can go to step B or whatever, like where I step in as a good father and all that stuff. So I call her up and I go, um, hey, why don't you take pregnancy tests on Skype in front of me? And then, you know, then you prove that you're pregnant and I'll, I'll be forced to step up. That's that's the deal. And she's like, she's like, oh, but pregnancy tests only work for so long. I'm like, oh. And she's like, yeah. Okay, well, I'll talk to you later. Like, I need to, I need to pee on a stick in front of you? I'm like, yeah. And then you'll know for sure. She's like, well... I'm not going to do that. So, and then I was like, victory! She doesn't want to do it, which means she's not pregnant because before she said she would do it. Um, yeah, so I'm not a daddy. Yay. I'm also getting a fertility test coming up because I'm pretty sure I'm incapable. But anyway, talk to you later. Bye. The absolute madman. In the fourth voicemail, Greg tells her he didn't cancel her flight ticket to fly down. Hey, so you know, I am not going to change my mind on this one, like, as far as you coming tomorrow, Thursday. No, at this point, he has already dumped her. The fifth voicemail, he again emphasized that she still has a plane ride to come be with him. And then he self-diagnoses himself with borderline personality disorder. I, w- I was recently informed that I have borderline personality disorder where I, I take things to extremes. The sixth voicemail starts out with this. Hello, I am calling you again because... I don't know. I'll stop calling you after Thursday. I promise. I promise. In this voicemail, Craig is obviously in a more positive, but still manic mindset. I feel like I'm going to be, like, the coolest guy ever. And you're going to see it on my videos. Like, I'm the, like, once I, now I've figured everything out. I don't know. He calls her again about 30 minutes later to leave another voicemail, saying he is... Um, problem is... I've turned into a stalker. Um, and then he tries to guilt her. It could be beautiful. It could be amazing. It could be so gorgeous. All the Star Trek and, and the, the, the video games with flashing lights and then this, the, I don't know, dorky music that is stupid and hilarious and like has jazz even. But you don't believe in me anymore. And then he tells her that calling her a uh, STD filled was not a personal attack. And just so you know, everything I said publicly, there were never attacks on you. I was just living my life. Like it's kind of like how you were just living your life when you said the thing about central massage. You're just you're just being you. The voicemail doesn't end here, though. We're reading the same book here. Same book, different perspectives. Honestly, Craig rambles worse than any homeless meth addict I've ever had to share a street corner with. All the voicemails combined last over 20 minutes, so I'll just sum up the rest. Like the manipulative, tiny dicked, wannabe cult leader Onision has continuously been, he switches between manic joy and trying to guilt Adrian. So, call me, or not, or live your life, or be free, be whatever you want. If you don't want that, you don't believe in me, okay. All while begging her to move in with him. And I don't know, this is me just telling you, like, if you don't want to get on the plane, I totally understand because I have a lot of work to do on myself, and if you don't want to be there with me through all that, that's fine. Wait for me to get better. Um, Then towards the end, he starts going down a depressing and increasingly angry spiral. I took the fall for everything in my videos, and now I'm getting nothing but crap about it. I made a 20-minute video defending myself. Because there's things that you said that needed to be clarified. Except I stopped fighting because I didn't want you to be hurt anymore. I didn't want people to attack you anymore. And now I'm on the receiving end of so much criticism. I'm losing subscribers and likes like crazy. I'm asking you for mercy. Did I sacrifice myself for nothing? You talk about love if you know what it is. I would never do this to someone I loved. I've given everything that I could to play the nice guy, to be a good person. Nothing's coming back to me. And I guess that's how it has to be. Because that's what it means when I say I hope you live a long and happy life. It means I'm going to do what I can to make that happen. And that means taking the fall for everything. The last voicemail is him threatening to expose Adrian because he's angry with her for not responding to him in a whopping 10-hour time period. 
just so you know, because of what you've done, because of the way you've slandered me, because of the lies you've told, because of the fact that you've completely ignored me and you've completely humiliated me publicly, and despite the fact that I was being kind about everything and saying, okay, fine, I'm not going to attack someone I love and I'm not going to fight back even though she's clearly attacking me. And I was hoping that you would actually answer your phone and deal with me like a human being. Because of all of this, I'm going to reveal every single detail. Every detail. And then everyone will know exactly who you are. You want to slander me? Well, I'm going to fight you with the truth. And the truth is not going to feel good. Goodbye. His manipulation tactics thankfully did not work on Adrian, and she never returned his calls. She cut him out of her life. She has yet to come back in present time like the rest of the exes. While constantly calling Adrian, Greg also makes three videos on his self-made drama. These videos were all posted on the same day as these voicemails, the first being titled, She Never Loved Me. Wow, that was an elongated explanation, and now here's an elongated explanation of the elongated explanation because I'm so fantastically detailed. Wow! Crazy. Okay, um, mm, get to the point. Oh, the point is, Adrian. Um, <laughs> well, I'm talking about her again. Creepy. I'm like a stalker. Uh, no, no. I just, I'm kind of like looking for wonderful positive closure. Also, he informs his viewers that he has moved on. But thank goodness I'm, I'm moving on because I was a wreck, like suicidal, a wreck. And now I'm better. No more crying in the shower, no more feeling absolutely miserable because things didn't go my way. <laughs> Judging by the voicemails, that's not the case, Greg. The next one was titled Borderline Personality Disorder, where he explained to viewers that his forums had diagnosed him with a personality disorder. Hi, um, I just found out something great from an Anision.net member. I have Borderline Personality Disorder. So now we know the problem. The last video is titled Unfiltered Thoughts, where Greg says relationships make people crazy. Hey, um... The people that I've known in my life, they always seem so stable, logical, um, reasonable until they get into some kind of relationship, you know, and then emotions get involved. And it seems like more often than not, people go totally crazy when they're in relationships. Like Completely deflecting where the blame actually belongs, himself. The phone rings during this video and Greg claims Sky is calling him. Fun fact, she's not. She still hasn't responded to him ever. Greg most likely is calling his own phone. That's Sky. I gotta go. It's just sad. Since Greg was having a total narc meltdown, during this time he made it so comments had to be approved before appearing publicly to viewers. This made it obvious Greg was trying to control the narrative and hide the fact that he was indeed breaking down. The next day, Greg uploaded three more videos about the Adrian drama. The first was, I will not fight her, which he quickly deleted. In the video, he questions if he should defend himself from what someone he loves has said about him. It's honestly a self-pity fest because no matter how hard he tries to make people think he is not in fact crazy, everyone is still seeing that he is in fact crazy. They won't even talk to me. Despite the fact... I, I can't even go there because I don't want to make them to be anything other than good. The next video is titled, Reality Check, where Onision starts a narrative that to this day he uses to try to make people think that he is never the problem in any of his failures. That narrative is that he was the one who ended all of his failed relationships. Therefore, anyone who speaks out against him is just a jolly hater. But let that be clear. I broke up with my last ex. I broke up with the ex before that, and I broke up with the ex before that. It's not like I failed these people. It's not like I was 100% at fault for anything. Because if that were true, then wouldn't I be the one who was dumped? He still does this to this day. For reality check, I dump a lot of people. I have a very low tolerance for people. I don't want to deal with a lot of the crap that people throw at me, so I just block them or otherwise try to disassociate with them. And so what happens? What happens is I know a lot of people who are now mad at me, but instead of them saying, hey, I screwed up, they're going to come at me trying to subconsciously justify to themselves why it's not their fault that I wound up walking away from them. What no viewer at this point knew is that he was still trying to get back with AJ behind the scenes despite publicly acting like he was the one who ended everything. His last, now deleted video, was titled Goodbye Dear, where he pretends he didn't try to post a bunch of malarkey about Adrian. Um, I almost released all the information about Adrian that I had in regards to the negative sides of her, basically my side of the story. You know, how I've been slandered by her side and everyone's expecting me to release my side of the story, 
when really, isn't this a little bit too Jerry Springer? You called her a whore, basically, Greg. Greg has this tendency to do this to this very day, pretending like what is going on is completely different than actual reality, hoping his viewers are not paying attention. We are. Oh, he also posted a video titled Closure to defuse the situation on September 22nd. I am constantly honest and a uh, sincere person. I have 1,005, well, except for those times when I play jokes on you guys and I reveal it later. I sometimes play jokes on you guys. Um, I am constantly honest and sincere person. I have over 1,500 videos online telling you exactly who I am. You know who to trust, and it is unlike, as unlike any other person or any the other person. I am not one who has said I love someone only to spread lies, reveal sexual details, and generally humiliate them in response to not even being legitimately attacked. On September 24th, when Eason decided to keep digging the STD focused hole he started and uploaded a video called Getting Tested. Um, I want to explain to you guys why I'm getting an STD test. It's not because, like, I actually think I have STDs. It's kind of just to get rid of that thought in the back of my mind that says, but what if? So Onision did not stay single for long. He immediately within days began to try to get back with Shiloh. We know about this thanks to an actually heartbreaking conversation between Shiloh's mom and Adrian. Adrian, having experienced the manic relationship roller coaster from an older perspective, was trying to help the worried mother, something that is later proven to be a very valid concern. I'll just read the whole conversation. It began September 24th. Shiloh's mom writes, Hey Adrian, he sucked her in again. She flew out to LA today. There's no one in this world that I hate more than this poor excuse for a man. He's going to destroy her yet. Adrian responds, I knew she was not telling me the truth, and I kind of figured this would happen. I tried everything I could to talk some sense into her, being one of the very few people on the planet who can relate to her, as I have walked in her shoes. I have voicemails he left me, of him trash-talking her. Then the next day he goes and starts calling her because he felt rejected by me, because he knows she is vulnerable and easily manipulated. He told me not only in person, but on the phone, over Skype, and in voicemails. I have saved that he doesn't believe she is pregnant. Then the next day calls her, begging for her to give him a second, for the sake of the baby. Even though I do not appreciate her lying to me, she is a young girl, I am 26, and she does not deserve to have her life ripped away from her because of this sociopath, megalomaniac, his insecurity-driven control issues. What's sad is that there is a possibility that I could too be pregnant. He told her, if she says she's pregnant, I'm going to tell her to call me in nine months and we'll see. Isn't that horrible? I really hope I'm not pregnant, so I never have to talk to this man again. I know I don't know your kiddo super well, but if there's anything I can do to help, please let me know. Sorry if this seems rushed. I'm typing this at work. Her mom responds, he tried mending things with his wife when he booted Shiloh out, and now he's turned to her when you guys didn't work out. He just found the weakest link. It scares me because I know how calloused he is from the last time. I was there to rescue her that time, but now she is too far away and knows absolutely nobody there. He is evil personified. It'll only be a matter of time before he kicks her out onto the street again. She just doesn't seem to have any self-worth anymore. It's so frustrating to see these fools that follow him. He's been transparent to me from the beginning. He's a predator that separates families from what he wants. He did it to his wife, almost did it to Shiloh, and it sounds like he's trying to do it with you. Hopefully, she'll look back at your combos and do some thinking for herself. Sadly, the mother's horror came true. We are on the final chapter. So on the 24th, Greg uploaded a video called, I'm having a baby. Oh, hello, I'm Anisiad. Let me be one of the first to admit that I do not have the safest of sex. And because of this, I have a lot of people maybe possibly saying that I got them pregnant. Okay, so now it says I let the scene stand for 20 minutes so it won't be so thick. Uh. I am stirring my own scene right now. Okay, I'm gonna grab it. There's supposed to be two lines there if I'm fertile. Uh oh. <laughs> People doubted Shiloh was pregnant at this time because in August, when she was hinting at being pregnant, she ended up posting a picture of a baby she claimed was her dead child, named Rogue. Shiloh claimed that she had not posted that picture. Greg defended this when they got back together. This event actually upset a lot of people. As I mentioned before, Greg had access to Shiloh's accounts. 
So for all we know, Greg could have uploaded this to turn people against Shiloh. It could have also been somebody else and possibly even Shiloh herself. People found the post insensitive to the mother of the child that was posted. On September 25th, Shiloh uploaded a video called STD, where she filmed in front of an identical background to Greg's recent videos. A day later, Shiloh uploaded an image of what seemed like an engagement ring. Fans began to realize what was actually going on. Greg had just gotten into a relationship, proposed to that girl, broken up with that girl, and then gotten into another relationship, and then gotten engaged to a different girl in less than a month. Greg then uploaded a video announcing Shiloh and him were back together, making it official. I'm back. Oh my god! Oh yeah, one more thing. It's like that. Greg lost many frustrated fans and forum members during this time, and Greg became increasingly frustrated with his fan base and began telling everyone to back off or unsubscribe. He also uploaded a video the same day as the announcement. I would title this video, the epitome of manipulative, but he himself titled it, Happy Again, where he smiles for 48 seconds and tells everyone Shiloh makes him happy. We are now on September 27th, eight days after Onis Yon's and AJ's final breakup. Greg and Shiloh post videos on this day, which are now famously remembered as the Dutty House videos. Shiloh uploaded a video titled Dutty VJJ, where she talked about how much she disliked people who didn't keep their genitals clean. Girls and guys that don't wash their, uh, that stuff. This is what I would do if I couldn't wash myself for a day. And at the same time, Onision uploaded a video titled Desperate for a Clean Home, where he compared his relationships to living in different houses. He made it clear that the house that represented Adrian's was dirty. You're calling me fat by comparing me to a home? Uh, actually, um, the home that I ended up in was smaller than the first home. Sweet. It's much prettier. <laughs> much more clean. <laughs> He then deleted the videos like a little puss. Onision continued to crack during this time. People watching this train wreck began to think Onision is staging all of this madness for views. I would probably agree with the idea at the time, but I've said this before to people who think Onision is trolling for views. No successful troll ruins their career and ability to earn money to troll. This theory that Onision was faking this became so prevalent that it has a wiki page on the Life of Onion wiki called Fake Drama Theory. Greg made it a video on the 30th called Onision Staged, Okay, um, if you think I'm fake, uh, talk to Olga K, talk to Exotic Jess, talk to Seer, talk to Stefan, talk to Shane Dawson, talk to anyone in my life, okay? These people know me. I, I have a billion and one references to verify that everything, however screwed up it is, that's happened is real, okay? Unless I tell you it's fake, it's real. He also uploaded a video called Successful Codependency. Um, seem to believe that, you know, codependency is just a horrible, horrible thing. It's a horrible thing if the person that you're codependent with uh, fails you, or you fail them, or just basically everything falls apart. But while things are stable and happy, I, I, I just want to ask you guys, what's, what's, what's wrong with it? Codependency, like if, if you are mutually codependent, and you are dependable, I'm not saying I'm dependable, I'm saying if you are dependable, what's the problem? But maybe that's just my warped opinion. Either way, Show the love and the thumbs ups, guys. Come on. And all I can say is, like, someone study this man, please. Someone with actual book learning and not me. I'll give you my notes. Something else really exciting happens on the 30th. A video of Onision jerking off leaked onto RedTube. Underneath the video of what appeared to be Onision jerking its baby carrot was text that read, I never thought it would come to this, but unfortunately it has. You use your audience to ridicule and slander a dear friend of mine. Her life has, quite literally, became a living hell as a result of your carelessness. I'm doing this for her. She told me she still had the video. Yes, that video. The one you made a few days after you met her. Get ready for your channel to be suspended indefinitely. The description further went into detail that this was revenge for Onision shaming Adrian publicly. Although, in the video, it looked like Onision's room and his clothing. This video was a fake and eventually disappeared. But it does serve as an example of how much negative attention Greg had gained for himself at this time due to his chaotic love life. I was actually hoping for a DSP situation, to be honest. Yes, I'm a masochist. 
Now we are in October 2011. Greg and Shiloh are together, and Sear and Greg stopped living together in LA. Greg started out the month by oversharing his love life, you know, like usual, with the video Love Quitters. It's a bad video. So I have a lot of self-analysis to do there. But uh, when you break up with someone, you are saying, I quit. Then okay, remember I mentioned Shiloh posting someone else's baby to Facebook, allegedly? Well, I guess people were still mad about this, including mothers, so Greg uploaded a video on October 2nd called, You Mad Bro? In the video, Greg aggressively defended Shiloh from the rumors about the premature baby photo. And, and quite frankly, I personally don't give a f Okay, and the reason I don't give a f is like, if she did that, she immediately removed it after she posted it. Okay, so that's kind of like her admitting guilt if she did that, which I don't believe she did that. She told me she didn't do it. I don't care, honestly. Like, I look at this as who was hurt, really. If you guys can show me who was hurt, let me know. Because there's this, there's this email from this mother who's angry, but isn't the child supposed to be like five years old now? So why would they still care? I guess Greg's empathy chip was malfunctioning more than usual that day. And I also guess that not many people took too kindly to this video. So Greg went on full damage control and uploaded another video that day titled, Haters Want an Apology. He's 25 and still whining about haters. In the video, he explains he is taking Shiloh's side in a calmer tone than the previous video. In the video, he says many people on his contact page were upset with his previous video. He defends himself by saying if he had a premature child and someone stole their picture, he would not care. Because they're fine, it's just a picture. I don't care about some douche on the internet using my picture. I mean, if they are a douche and if they are using the picture, like, okay. It's like, it's, it's, it's this picture. It's not my actual, like, my kid's alive and fine. I don't get it. So anyway, I, I guess I should apologize to you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and apologize right now uh, because... I don't see the big deal in using someone's picture. I mean, I, I see a big deal in lying, but I don't see the big deal in someone using someone else's picture with a lie. It's just, it's like, okay, you're a douche for lying, you're a douche for posting that. Anyway, so here's my apology. He then ends the video by flipping off the camera. All right, so I guess the baby drama blew over, and yes, Shiloh is pregnant now. On the 8th, Greg posted a video called Silence, where he confirms Shiloh and he are engaged, and that everyone sucks, and that he's not sharing details about his relationships anymore with his 12-year-old fans. Like... I don't want to have to sit here and justify my every relationship choice to a bunch of primarily probably 12 year olds. Which lasts all of three days because then Greg uploaded a video titled, Do I have STDs? Greg says he tested negative for STDs. That same day, Shiloh relays in a post about how upset her dad is about her going back to the caveman psycho, making me respect her father. Shiloh even mentions her father being appropriately protective in her interview with Chris Hansen. When he was alive, um, I'm sorry, did he that is okay. Um, when he was around, he, 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 for lack of a better term, wanted to put an end to it. Due to all this drama going on, Onision dropped out of the top 100 most subscribed to YouTubers in October. He hit the top 100 list in 2010, around November. His channel peaked at the 66th most subscribed channel on YouTube. But during the summer of 2011, the Onision channel rank began to take a turn for the worst. It continued to drop due to the increasing instability becoming public and on October 13th, 2011, the Onision channel dropped off the top 100 list and has not yet returned. Onision most likely noticed this because the next day he hit a manic episode in his mood spikes and posted a video titled, I'm sorry, where uh, he says, and I've been noticing that a lot of the haters are obsessing over me so much that it's come to the point where it's undeniable that they all want to have butt sex with me, that they would love to get on their knees and please me. I recognize you, okay? I understand that you want to have butt sex with me. But not only am I a straight man, I can't be with you because I'm with Shiloh, and I love her very much. This is a defense mechanism that Onision actually still does to this day. In fact, he has done it really recently in 2019, where he is now under fire from Chris Hansen. And in retaliation to that, he made a video trying to make his drama sexualized. You met me in a hotel in San Francisco, and oh my right. god, you f***ed me <sighs> so hard. I discussed in part one, Onision never changes, and he really never does. His attempt to make humor out of the increasing hate continued the next day with the upload titled, Strong For You, where he says how he planned to deal with the haters. I'm going to deal with it as I've always dealt with it, um, by responding them to them if I want to, or not responding to them, or by ignoring them, or by uh, nuking their country. 
Um, I don't know, you know, I just, I just kind of like, they go away. You know, haters are kind of weak. They just, they move on, they get bored. How'd that work out for you, Greg? It's seven years later. Let's take a look at those view counts versus your sub count. Oh, I know, those, those aren't good numbers there. <laughs> the hate increased the very next day, and Adrian released the email that I referenced earlier to detail the insane three-week relationship he had with her because she was tired of the narrative that Onision had spun that she was a dirty whore full of diseases. The part that people pick up the most from this was Onision referring to Beeches as suck me, and everyone began to mock him. Cue meltdown. Immediately following the public mocking, Greg went on damage control again and uploaded a video called suck me, lol, to prove to everyone that he is not at all bothered. Um, you can believe in the whole suck me thing. That's, that's something that's been spread around. He also uploaded a video titled, Three Weeks Versus Six Years on the Same Day, to respond to Adrian's email. He proceeded to go on his typical rampage about how he didn't do anything wrong. Cause Shiloh returned to him, therefore Adrian is, is on a um, slandering rampage. The person who only knew me for a few weeks is on a slandering rampage because they got dumped or whatever the reason is, I, I'm not sure exactly. Onision continued to not be bothered by the increasing number of people laughing at him for asking a girl to suck him by uploading a song called Suck Me. In the video, he doesn't mention anything to do with the Adrian drama, but he did spell suck in the way AJ did in the email. Some believe he created this song to distract viewers from Adrian's writings. Adrian responded appropriately to this by writing, I am just losing because he is seriously that butthurt over it that he took the time and effort to make a music video, you know, to show how much he doesn't care. A music video of which exploits his sexual escapades with me while including his current girlfriend. How sad and degrading, yet still lousy, is it? The Onision drama followers began to suspect Greg's abusive nature, causing Shiloh to publish a video titled, Greg Abuses Me, where she mocks people's allegations. Greg and I decided that this year we'd go for realism, so he took the scissors to my ear in my sleep, and now I'm bleeding. But, I mean, it's a great look. It's gonna scare all the kids, you know? <laughs> you know this video's never gonna be online, right? No one will ever know how much I abuse you. It's ridiculous that you think you'll be successful. With all the pregnancy rumors, Onision and Shiloh finally announced they are officially pregnant on October 27th. They confirmed this later with a blood test and an ultrasound filmed on camera. Onision's public scrutiny by other YouTubers was very much ramping up, but on November 4th, The Amazing Atheist, also known as TJ Kirk, uploaded a video titled, Strangest YouTuber. And no, the strangest YouTuber in the video was uh, not Onision here, but TJ Kirk began the video by talking about how insane Onision is and concluded, Hello, Onision! You know what I do with bananas, don't you? Which is a reference to a leaked video of TJ shoving a banana up his flabby ass. <laughs> the beginning of November is rather a slow one in terms of drama by comparison to the rest of the year, but it does take a turn for the worst. First, on November 20th, Greg made a video titled Where's Freya? In reference to the genital biting dog where he addresses rumor that Shiloh got the dog to lick her. He stated that he gave the dog back to the original owner. This is the first of many of Greg's pets that he cycles through when they become inconvenient. Also, the dog rumors, mentioned this earlier, was probably caused by his mom, who is endearingly nicknamed by drama watchers as Crazy Tammy. She let it publicly known at this time that she didn't like Shiloh. More anti-Onision pages pop up around this time. A Facebook page called Onision is a liar, and an Encyclopedia Dramatica page up here. The gossip surrounding Onision was definitely picking up, with no one to blame but Greg himself for sharing all the details of his lunacy. I want to use a post on the Onision drama Tumblr page from November 29th to emphasize this. Anonymous asked, so according to someone who left a comment on one of Shiloh's Facebook posts, spoke with her earlier that day, Greg and Shiloh temporarily broke up the other day. Greg told her that he never loved her and drove off but came home 30 minutes later, and that was when Shiloh went offline from talking to the person, and they apparently go back together. It's rumored that they were fighting because Shiloh wanted to, or did, eat meat because of the pregnancy. I don't know if these events actually happened. They could have. I just wanted to emphasize how much people were gossiping at this time. The Tumblrs and the Facebook pages continued to gossip about the drama, arguing whether it was fake or not, which caused Onision to upload another video saying that his life wasn't fake, titled, 
Shallow and Greg, colon, nonfiction, to his Onision Speaks channel on December 6, 2011. In the video, he rants on how these gossipers are skeptical on if his publicized life is real or fake, saying those who are gossiping are biased and hate him because he is a vegetarian, because he's against circumcision, etc. He decides in the video to use an event that happened earlier that day to prove that all of this is real. Okay, here we go. This morning, Shiloh and I were not on good terms because I was being stupid, she was being stupid. We were just, we, were, we weren't connecting right, okay? So she left and she put the keys to the house to the drop slot so I would have the keys. And so she, she couldn't get back in because she didn't want to get back in. So I go to unlock the door just in case she did want to get back in. And she comes back and she comes inside and she tells me not to unlock the door. Then she leaves again, drops the keys to the drop slot again, and she walks three miles down the road and passes out, probably from exhaustion or maybe from stress, who knows? The point is that she's okay. I just want to establish that she is okay. So the fire department rolls up and they get her back on her feet and they bring her back here to let me know that they're gonna take her to the hospital. I'm like, okay, so you gotta take her to the hospital. I, I, I hope she's okay, um, I'll be at the hospital in a few minutes. He goes on talking to the haters, telling them, To all the haters and the disbelievers, I say, fuck you. Because this is real life that you're watching. This isn't some bullshit reality show. He states that the reason he shares all of these things is so that we, the viewers, can learn from his experiences. So you can not be me, or so you can do better than me. He ends the video by thanking the workers that help him, and say he is glad he paid his taxes, even though he was so poor after taxes. He ends the video with a And fuck you haters. Bye. The constant stress finally took a terrible turn. On December 8th, Shallow went to the hospital for a prenatal checkup. No heartbeat was heard. The baby died, but it did not pass. Shallow informs her followers with a Facebook status reading. So he went to go listen to the baby's heartbeat today, and she couldn't hear anything, so she did an ultrasound. It's the size of a five-week-old pregnancy, and I'm supposed to be 12 weeks. She said my baby most likely passed six weeks ago, and now I am just waiting for the body to be released. Because of this, Shiloh, at age 18, Googles what going septic is. Shiloh, when interviewing with Chris Hansen, details the care she was given while pregnant. I went off to Canada. Did you ever think one moment to take you to the emergency room or to the hospital instead of making a video? No, he straight up told me he wasn't going to pay for the health care. He so wasn't going to pay for the health care? No. Greg updated his followers the day after the news with a video titled, Update on Our Baby. Greg barely gave Shiloh a break after finding out the child growing in her womb was dead and tweeted Shiloh and him had broken up on December 14th and then apologized for not listening to everyone that told him not to get back together with her. Taylor Anderson, later to go by Kai, replied with comforting words telling Greg, don't ever change, I love you, less than three. The breakup didn't last long enough to make a video on, because the next day, thanks to Shiloh's attempt to self-diagnose herself due to Greg's refusal to pay for his fiance's health care, Greg posts a video titled, Shiloh has sepsis. I'm just making this video to let you all know that when Shiloh was blood tested in regards to whether or not she was pregnant um, and it concluded that she was going to miscarry, unfortunately. He says he will take a break from making videos for a few days until Shiloh left to be treated in Canada. He doesn't mention the actual reason she's going to Canada, because she needs the health care that he refused to pay. Throughout the video, Greg is talking, sitting on a chair, as Shiloh is cuddled over him. Well, he informs everyone that this break from making videos is abnormal because he always keeps a schedule. Leave it up to Onision to think other people wouldn't understand a major event like this would mean someone would need to take some time off. Greg informs the audience that because of a urinary infection got into Shiloh's blood, she needed to be rushed to a hospital in Canada, and that she needs to get on a plane soon. He explains he wanted to spend his last days with her in America not editing videos, and thanks fans for supporting him. The screen turns black, and there is white text that reads, please send love to youtube.com slash Draculo, as she fights this horrible disease. The last scene is Greg and Shiloh hugging as Shiloh is crying. Greg wasted no time being away from an unavailable vagina, with the threat of Shiloh not being in America anymore to pleasure him. So the day he posted this video, he also emailed Alicia, aka Natsunisa, aka his ex-wife's sister, the one he screamed the name of when he orgasms, allegedly. He wrote Alicia, I need someone to make videos. She's going back to Canada as she got sepsis. It's sad. Anyways, like I said, we should work together for the sake of both our channels growing. Alicia doesn't respond. December 16th rolls around, the day Shiloh was flying back to Canada. 
Greg doesn't waste any time before he and Shiloh part, and they adopted another dog named Nibbles, since the last dog worked out so well. Then Greg dropped Shiloh off to make sure the mess he caused is somebody else's problem, and then proceeded to do a live stream where he talks about what happened. How's Shiloh going? Can I get a shout out? Shout out to Missy, and Shiloh is doing all right. She's, uh, we're basically both trying to avoid crying. In the stream, the most honest YouTuber also lies about not talking to Shiloh romantically until after his marriage with Sky fell apart. To say this, um, but to the best of my knowledge, she didn't have any like perverted thoughts about me or anything weird thoughts about me, and I didn't have any thoughts about her. I know for a fact I didn't have any thoughts about her. Um, I was actually commenting on the contrary. I was like just trying to help her. But then my marriage fell apart, and I was like, things sucked for me and she stepped right up and was there for me. Greg didn't calm down one moment because same day Shiloh is carted back to Canada, he uploaded a very angry video titled, What's Going On? In the video, he talked about Shiloh and how she didn't go to the hospital right when she got off the plane like she said she needed to do. He's very upset because he told everyone. Here's the thing. I'm like, I just told everybody that you were going straight to the hospital. You just made me look like the world's biggest asshole because I'm telling everybody this information that you're giving me and I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here going, what's really happening? Even though, like, it's none of our business. Also note, Shallow hadn't seen a real doctor to tell her if she really was as bad as she thought she was. He then apologizes to his fans for saying Shallow was going to the hospital but wasn't. And I'm so sorry, everyone. I'm ridiculously sorry that this... Such a fucking idiot, I swear to God. That night, when Shiloh landed in Canada, Greg broke up with her. After telling everyone what a dirty no-no liar Shiloh was, the next day, he removed the sepsis video from his main channel and uploaded it to his archive channel, but this time with added text. To paint Shiloh as a liar further, Greg wrote, I made the mistake of believing a lie. The following appears to be that lie. For that, I am sorry. But Greg was not done trying to destroy this young girl. He also uploaded a video titled Goodbye Shiloh that same day. Greg pulls out all the manipulation tactics that he had programmed into his chip for this video. He plays sad music. He shows Shiloh and him being happy. He edits us all to the music. He shows the cute pupper, Nibbles. And then the music eventually stops and Greg is crying in the car like the emo little bitch she is. His phone rings. It's from Shiloh. And he tells her he loves her. And then it ends. It's garbage. He also uploaded a video titled, I'm Sorry, where he admits he lied, but only because the mean old nasty Shiloh lied to him. He says that the doctors, the ones he didn't pay for in reality, I never heard any doctor or nurse state that she has sepsis. The whole video is a, I never did anything wrong, Shiloh was a big meanie who is now in Canada and not actually sick. He also did a live stream, same day, and continued to attack the woman who was supposed to be the mother of his child. She's probably sick of being criticized because she gets a lot of hate mail and stuff probably like now more than ever considering everything looks like a big huge fucking lie. Someone asked if I'm still going to be there for Shiloh. Um, if Shiloh is indeed sick and she needs me, I'm going to obviously be there. But if she's not sick, no. The whole sepsis situation caused so much backlash. While Greg was campaigning to ruin Shiloh's credibility, things took a turn for the worst for the young pop singer. I'm going to reference the Google Doc once again here. 12-18-2011. Patient Zero, aka Shiloh, is wheeled to the Canadian ER with extreme abdominal pain. She is given Pitocin and spends the next 10 hours in the ER as the surgeons scrape out the septic fetal tissue. She is delirious after the emergency DNC and asks for Greg. Her mother steals her passport, ensuring Patient Zero will not go back to him. Shiloh posted a thread to Twitter recently on the situation. She writes, I received an emergency DNC. My mind was still so bent that when I came to from the anesthesia, I asked for Greg. My mother took my passport from my purse. This was the last breakup. In the delusional world of Onision, the one that he painted to his viewers, this was not the last breakup, but we will discuss that in the next part. It's disturbing how Greg can fabricate so many lies to his audience about other people. It's disturbing how he can be earning tons of money up until fairly recently. People nowadays talk about how bad cancel culture is. I can agree, but I wish people were more ready to cancel Greg back then. 
Instead, Shiloh and Sky have been silenced by their abuser up until now. I was going to go into 2012 as well in this video, but 2011 was such a doozy, and the ending made me kind of sick. Not only due to reading about the medical procedures Shiloh had to go through, but also while going through that, she had to deal with being painted as a liar by someone she loved. She even at this time felt the need to upload an album of her in the hospital to try to defend herself, but the damages Greg did were already done. I kind of thought they were both crazy, and to some extent, Shiloh did participate in Greg's insanity. But the power a significantly older man has, especially when he takes you away from your family and career, can be frightening. If I had a daughter, I would show her Onision as an example of who not to date. I'm going to add in some more of what Shiloh said in her recent interview with Chris Hansen on her experience here. How bad did it get in the time you lived with him? When I explain it to other people, it's like a horror movie to them. I've explained it to therapists and actually a therapist and actually gone back to them and had them say, Hey, I'm really sorry. I had to Google you because I didn't believe this. What's the single worst thing he did to you? Single worst? Meet me. Oh, and I forgot to mention this. I wanted to end with the end of the relationship with Shiloh, but after all of this, Craig spends zero time to grieve over his lost child and the ending of his engagement. And he emails Alicia a day after Shiloh has emergency surgery, asking if Alicia is okay. I mean, screw Shiloh, am I right? And then getting no response, he emails her again the next day, asking if she wants to be in a comedy skit. Doesn't respond to that either. What a cunt. Next video, we will just cover Greg's official ending of his relationship with Shiloh and all the other relationships he tried to get into. I like to thank my patrons here. The last video got demonetized, actually like my last three videos did. So if you like these videos and if you happen to like me, please consider becoming a patron. I give thanks to everyone at the end of my videos and I'm working on some benefits to make it more worth your while. Also, you can keep up to date with me on Twitter at not Cecil McFly, and my link to my Patreon will be linked below. The next part should be sooner because I was planning on going further in this part, so I got all my research ready for the next part. I'll see you in the next video.